Good morning. It's Friday, January 29th, and welcome to this episode of Tiger Vision News. I'm Ashlyn. And I'm Chris. FCA and Teens for Christ will be meeting in the new gym at lunch today. Everyone is welcome. Now, if you'll please join us for a moment of silence. Would you please stand for our Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag? Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This broadcast is brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, First Star Bank, Angkor Gibson Education Foundation. Today is National Puzzle Day. National Puzzle Day recognizes how exercising our brains with puzzles is just one of its many benefits. Scientists have discovered that when we work on a jigsaw puzzle, we utilize both sides of our brain, improving memory, cognitive function, and problem-solving skills in the process. Yearbook is doing group photo retakes today. Students need to check in with their sponsors to see if their group will be doing a retake. Since we are still in orange, masks are to be worn when social distancing is not available. As always, the mask our school provides cost our district money, so please do your part every day and bring a mask. Since the numbers are rising across the state, it is important that masks be worn correctly and when possible. Being it should be above the nose and mouth. Students who plan on taking ICTC for the 21-22 school year, please submit your completed application to the counselor's office. Interviews will be conducted on February 23rd here at the high school. Juniors and seniors, if you are interested in joining any branch of the armed service, you should sign up for the ASVAB in the counselor's office. The test will be administrated on Thursday, March 4th at 8 a.m. in the writer's workbench. See your counselor for more details. Now let's go to Mr. Farmer for our superintendent spotlight, followed by Braden for this week's weather. Hi Tigers, happy Friday. Uh, just want to give a quick update from, uh, from the district. Uh, first, I want to congratulate everybody and thank everybody for the work you've done to uh, do what we can to safely stay in school up to date. Uh, we want to continue that progress as we start to close out this second trimester and start looking forward to the third trimester. And I want to throw out a couple of reminders, of course. I know it sounds cliche and you hear it all the time, but uh, continue to stay diligent in all that we can do to, to stay in school and to keep everybody safe. And we know the three W's to watch your distance, wash your hands, and, and wear a mask. And I want to thank all you students and teachers out there for doing such a great job on, on maintaining that protocol and wearing a mask and, and keeping everything in an upbeat and positive spirit. Um, and uh, be looking in your inboxes and on social media. We've got our third trimester survey that's going to be uh, coming out this week to start declaring what your intent is and what your academic tracks will be, uh, whether it's full-time virtual or uh, the traditional setting. Um, that survey will be opened up and will close. I believe we've got February 5th close date on that. So start getting those decisions made and getting them, them back to us so we can make preparations for that third and final trimester. And I want to send a very imp re important reminder to everybody, um, much different than last spring, even when we're virtual or if we're temporary virtual or if we're in the traditional setting, these grades matter. So as we close out this second trimester, make sure we're getting our work done and, and doing what we need to do uh, to close out strong because uh, these are real grades and there are consequences. So make sure we do all we can to, to meet our expectations, meet your expectations, and let's close out strong. So even those times we have to go virtual and hopefully we don't have to again, but uh, uh, that's all being recorded and that's all coming down to the, to the wire. So let's close out strong and uh, good luck to all of our activities. I know we have uh, a lot of our winter activities uh, starting to look towards the postseason, having those conversations about uh, what the future holds. Um, stay positive and keep working through some of the, the challenges that we face with COVID. Um, if you feel bad, stay home. The last thing we want to do is, is end up in a, in a case where we have to quarantine a lot of kiddos, especially around this postseason time for all you activity or folks in, involved with activities. Uh, so just be real conscientious of, of your neighbor and of you and, and everyone around you that uh, if you're not feeling good, let's stay home and uh, keep everybody safe. 
I also want to give everybody a reminder that as uh, we are moving into a little bit of a change in this uh, COVID climate that we're in, uh, you watch the news that vaccines are becoming available to folks. Right now, the health department in the state is working on anybody that's 65 or under and comor that have comorbidities. Um, those are available uh, to them. We do hope in the next uh, two to three weeks, it's still, it's, it's a little bit fluid, but we'll be able to have some vaccination clinics uh, available in the area, or maybe even on site, we'll see, uh, for our staff. And so students, I wanna challenge you with something. Uh, one of the things that I keep hearing from the health department is that our 65 and over crowd have had a little bit of an issue navigating the uh, online portal to get registered um, for the COVID vaccine and that slowed down the process of getting to the next tier. So if you've got a grandparent out there or a parent or somebody that might uh, need a vaccine that meets some of those categories, uh, step out and be a leader and help them. Help them go through that process, help them get registered if you think they might be struggling with that online portal. That helps everybody in the end and it moves this vaccination process along. So accept that challenge, go help a neighbor in need, go help a family member that might be having trouble navigating that process and let's continue doing our part uh, to get through this. Appreciate you Tigers, hope you have a great week. Today you can expect partly cloudy skies with temperatures reaching the low 50s to mid 50s and then dropping to the upper 40s tonight. Saturday will be warmer reaching the low 60s, however, we will have an 80% chance of showers and thunderstorms in the morning. Temperatures will drop back down on Sunday with highs only reaching the upper 40s. Temperatures will be in the 50s for the beginning of next week with partly cloudy skies. We would like to thank Channel 6 for this week's weather graphic and now a word from one of our sponsors. Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home and the only crematory in Muskogee. Cornerstone welcomes the opportunity to answer any questions regarding planning and pre-arrangements for you and your loved ones. At Cornerstone, you'll find a helpful professional staff and beautiful surroundings. Come experience the difference at Cornerstone Funeral Home, 1830 North York, Muskogee, where you will find faces you know and reputations you trust. Now for a few senior announcements. Senior portfolios are due February 24th. These portfolios must include eight hours of service, a career roadmap, a resume that is completed on OK Career Guide, and your 9th through 11th year interviews. Please make sure to have these items completed. The State Department and ACT are providing a free ACT for our current seniors. This will be an online administration, no writing, on school on March 2nd. It is separate from the junior administration that will take place in April. Ms. Adney will be sending out a survey to seniors to determine who would like to opt in to take it. Seniors, make sure your college applications and scholarship applications are submitted on time. Most are due soon. Also seniors, please don't forget to fill out your FAFSA for financial aid for college. Time is running out, so make sure it's turned in soon. Lastly, senior, lastly senior interviews and required CPR training for seniors will be announced soon. Now to Dominic with this week's sports. Hey Tiger Town, our girls basketball play second in the Old Ford Classic as they lost to Roland 45 to 48, but beat Locust Grove 44 to 36. Our boys also won against Locust Grove 59 to 38. The girls will be playing tonight at 6:30, and if you can't make it to the game, tune in to FortGibsonTigers.tv. Our wrestlers won the Style Saw tournament and against Tahlequah. They will be at the Maverick Conference today and tomorrow. Tuesday, our swim team raced 6A, Yukon, Shakota, Mount St. Mary's, Tulsa Memorial, and Edison Prep. Fort Gibson claimed the victory in every single relay event for both boys and girls, including the relay. They won 17 out of the 22 events. The majority of the swimmers were in the top five of each event, with the majority being in the top three. Senior Haley Schrapp broke the 100-meter backstroke school record with a 111.08 time. The record previously was a 111.16 from 2005 slammed by Carly Miller. We wish them the best of luck as they prepare for the Rose Invitational tomorrow and regionals next weekend. We wish our teams the best of luck. And now, a word from one of our sponsors. Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal opportunities, opportunities for students and teachers to be their best. An opportunity to build, design, and compete. 
An opportunity to create, design, and share. An opportunity to encourage, develop, and provide. An opportunity to travel, process, and gain real-world knowledge. An opportunity to honor, celebrate, and inspire. When you donate to our Fort Gibson Education Foundation, 100% of what you donate goes back into our classrooms for students and teachers so we can give them as many opportunities as possible. We are your Fort Gibson Education Foundation. Valentine Day, Valentine's Day is just around the corner and ELC PTO is selling Valentine candy grams. You can either choose the $5 option, which includes a plastic mason jar, or a cup with straw, bouncy ball, and assorted candy and chocolates, or the $10 option, which includes a plush Valentine gnome with assorted candies and chocolates in a mailbox or plastic container. You can purchase one of these online at Fort Gibson ELC PTO.com. They will be delivered to all FTG buildings. Now let's go to Ashlyn, who has a story about fashionable masks. As COVID-19 continues throughout the world, there are more options to choose for your mask. Face coverings come in different colors and types, and different people prefer different ones. I chose this mask because it represents an, organiz an organization I belong to. The reason I chose this mask is because it's black and goes with everything, and it's easy to breathe through. Uh, at home, I have about 25 different masks, so I try to cycle through them and wash them repeatedly, so that way I always have a clean one. However, I try to wear this one when I'm out and about because if I'm going to work at Fort Gibson and be proud of Fort Gibson, I should probably rep some of the colors and the school. According to the CDC, wearing a mask helps reduce respiratory droplets that are then spread into the air from sneezing, coughing, and talking. By covering your nose and your mouth, this will increasingly help reduce COVID cases. I feel okay about wearing masks because I know it's necessary and it helps slow down the uh, spread of the COVID. I am a firm believer in wearing masks because if we want to defeat this virus and make everyone safe for future, we need to do something now. And if I can do whatever I can do to make sure that you're safe around me, I will do that. And I think everyone else should do that too. Regardless to the type of mask or face covering you wear, we all need to do our part to stop the spread of the coronavirus so we can go on to live a healthier lifestyle. I'm Ashlyn reporting for Tiger Vision. My sister makes my masks so they fit me perfectly and go with all my outfits. I personally just like a plain black mask that I can get online. High school will be stay starting its pennies for patients to help families and those suffering from leukemia, lymphoma, Hodgkin's disease, and myeloma. In each third hour class, you can donate money to help, out help these patients out. Of course, there's a little something for those classes who raise the highest percentage. First place will win a pizza party and second place will win a pop party. These awards will be given during lunch or third hour during February 15th through the 18th. All donations must be ready to be picked up Wednesday, February 10th. Donations will be verif verified February 12th and winners will be announced February 15th. See Ms. Killeen in room 106 to turn in your donations. Now let's go to Logan who has an animal in store for us this week. This week we shall be looking into this cute little owl species known as Athena cuniculara, but commonly known as burrowing owls. Burrowing owls spend most of their time prowling for food. Unlike most in the owl family though, these owls are happy to do their hunting in the daytime, like most predatory birds. These little owls do something different though. They make their homes in the old burrows of ground squirrels and prairie dogs, giving them their unique name. And these tiny birds can look vastly different based on their habitat, ranging from mottled brown to having white specks all over their body. These small owls like to eat a large variety of items, such as grasshoppers, scorpions, voles, and mice. They live all over North and South America and are solitary animals. They are currently marked as a threatened species on the endangerment scale. And for this reason, we as humans should try our best to preserve the world we live on and the animals that inhabit it. This has been Logan Tidmore for Tiger Vision News. I really like owls, whether they're big or they're small. I've always been scared that an owl would come and take my dog out of my backyard. Yeah, that would be pretty scary. The end of their second trimester is approaching fast with only three weeks left until the end of the try. Please check your grades on Trackable or check in with your teacher for any work that needs or can be turned in. The middle school recently held its annual spelling bee and, con and contest and we have a lot of great spellers. Here's Kenneth for more. 
Recently, the middle school held its annual spelling bee competition. 15 students participated in the competition, and it took around two hours to determine the winner. Um, I was excited for counties, but I was nervous before it, so it'll be fun, and it's on my birthday, so that'll be extra fun. Really excited to, you know, just get up there and spell some words and see if I could win it or not. Uh, I was really nervous, because I really didn't want to get out in the first round, so... The winner, Easton Wicks, will continue on to district competition in Muskogee this coming spring. The runner-up was Xander Floyd and will also be continuing to attend the, the district competition. It's going to be way harder at uh, counties, though, so, yeah. I'm very ready. Uh, I'm ready to do my best. I'm ready. I'm ready to see who wins it, too. Congratulations to all that participated, and the best of luck to Easton and Xander at district. This is Kenneth reporting for Tiger Vision News. Congratulations to all of the Spelling Bee part participants and best of luck to Easton and Xander at the next level. This is a reminder that all school lunches are free to students throughout the rest of the school year. Go grab a nutritious lunch. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Tiger Vision News. I'm Ashlyn. And I'm Chris. Remember to tune in next week for, for more Tiger Vision News. <laughs>